Un cálido saludo, divinos televidentes. Mi nombre es José, desde San José, Costa Rica. Nuestra gente les desea una feliz Navidad y que Dios los bendiga a ustedes y a sus seres queridos. En el episodio de hoy les presentamos la historia de la Navidad y el amor de Jesús, parte 2 de 2. Jesucristo, profeta, carpintero, místico, hijo de Dios, salvador y amigo. Él es conocido por muchos nombres. El nacimiento de este amado maestro que nació en Belén marcó el inicio del calendario occidental. Tan importante fue su influencia en la humanidad. El nacimiento de este hombre, que fue uno con Dios, es un evento sagrado que marca toda una era. Jesús hizo su aparición en el escenario del mundo de forma humilde. Nació de una pareja judía devota, José y María, a los que se les dio signos de su grandeza. Por la Biblia sabemos que cuando Jesús tenía 12 años, se quedó en un templo en Jerusalén para hablar y hacer preguntas a los maestros. La gente estaba asombrada por su entendimiento. Muchas fuentes dicen que Jesús fue a la India, tierra del conocimiento espiritual desde tiempo inmemorial, donde estudió con discípulos y profesores sabios. Entra después en la narrativa del Evangelio a la edad de 30 años, cuando fue bautizado por Juan el Bautista, un evento que marca el principio de su breve vida pública como maestro. Jesús enseñó el amor y el perdón de Dios a toda la gente de corazón abierto. Jesús podía hablar de las escrituras con los eruditos y las aprendió, pero en general contaba simples historias llamadas parábolas, que todos podían entender. Jesús es especialmente amado y recordado por su sacrificio. Tres días después de su crucifixión, resucitó de entre los muertos en gloria y triunfo. Para celebrar esta Navidad en el amor y la gloria de Jesús, nos gustaría presentar el siguiente extracto de la conferencia de la Maestra Suprema Ching Hai a los miembros de nuestra asociación en una reunión en Nochebuena, el 24 de diciembre de 1990 en Costa Rica. Many people ask me why vegetarian. Because the first commandment, thou shalt not kill. Everything were made by God. We have no right to destroy. If God has not given us permission, which God never had. Because if we remember the Old Testament, God did not give us permission to kill animals. He only say, rule over them and help them, or they will keep you company. Mm -hmm. And he say he made every all kind of food for each kind of animals. And he also said all the herbs I made all the herbs in in the field, all the fruits uh, on the trees which are pleasant to look and good for the taste, these are your food. Never in the Bible I find any sentence say the animals are your food. Old Testament, New Testament, nothing says that like No, God never say like that. Now, Jesus left our world very young. As I told you, because he wants to set good, us a good example, to remind us not, of, uh, not, not to cling to this world, because there are other permanent, more permanent worlds in, the, in God's kingdom. Jesus did not refuse to die, did not reject, and did not protest, because he was sure of heaven. He always said, my kingdom is in heaven. Therefore, he set us a perfect example, that we should not fear death, if we have faith in God. Because he said, in my Father's house there are many mansions. Why should we cling to this world are full of misery and short-lived and ephemeral when uh, our Father in heaven has so many mansions. Jesus' death on the cross has so much, so much wonderful meaning, so many wonderful lessons for us. If we think about it, probably we come to more 
conclusion, more uh, ideas. You see, Jesus was young, very young. He could have had beautiful lovers. He could have enjoyed the world, at least after he was famous, became famous. And so many people loved him. But when he has to go, he just go. He neither feel attached to fame nor love of the people of the world. So how would we, when we have not that much, when we were older than him, or maybe not as good looking as he, not as wise as he, not as loved as he, not as respected and sought after as he. He had traveled wide all over the world, over ten years, and he learned so many things. He has so much magic powers. He could achieve anything he wants, even turn white in, uh, water into wine. How would we? Laboring all day long just for a little bit of fruit juice. And we don't want to let go of this world. So Jesus had to make an example, even though silently, si through silence, sacrifice. That's why we remember him. That's why people till now still shed tears over him, including myself sometimes, even recently. When, when I read the Bibles, sometimes I read again and again. And when I read of how, how they treated him, oh, I was so hurt, so I suffer so much. And once I, I was alone in my room and I cry very loud. I keep calling his name and cry very loud. Of course, I understand it's all God's will too. And I understand uh, he has his purpose. But because we, we have human's body, human's heart, so we cannot help sometimes to have this human's emotion. So the best thing we can do to show our gratitude to Jesus is just that is we, uh, we try es to live according to what Jesus is teaching <laughs> and try to keep God's commandment because he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's all he wanted. And keep the commandment is not good for God and not God good, good for Jesus, it's good for us alone. God needs nothing from us, Jesus needs nothing from us. But God knows, Jesus knows, that if we keep the commandments, our word would become better and we will be more benefited, more peaceful, more happy. He wanted that even in our short stay on earth, we enjoy our bliss and comfort and glorify ourselves. Instead of suffering and being miserable most of the time of our life, that's all. But because we couldn't keep it sometimes, because we feel God is far away, so we neglect the uh, commandments of God, and then we encounter disaster. Then we suffer, we cry. Then we pray to God. So now God had to send a messenger down again, maybe in different names, to remind us, to uh, teach us again the, the way of happiness. Hmm. You see, Jesus also say, I will send, God will send comforters to us. That means the same spirit will descend in different bodies. When, whenever hum, humanity needs comfort and needs, uh, uh, how say, uh, correction in the way of life, anyone teaches the same as Jesus, or give us the same comfort as Jesus did, as stated in the Bible, then we should know that this is the comforter that Jesus sent to us. We may search and we may choose any of these. If there should be so many, one is enough. If you do not uh, think there is such a messenger, comforter, then we must also at least keep God's commandment and think and pray to God all the time. Otherwise, the grace of Jesus will not descend on us and his sacrifice would have been a waste to us. 
and we have no gratitude to him. Now we say, Jesus has come here and he has washed our sin. So what is the need to repent or to think of pray anymore? But we must still do it. Knock and it shall be opened, ask and it shall be given. We must knock, we must ask. Otherwise God will say, don't bother to knock, don't bother to ask. <laughs> I'll give to you anyway. But he did, he did in the Garden of Eden. But we humans did not appreciate it. So he sent us down here to learn through hardship. So now we should learn fast and go back to Eden. Now we must ask, we must knock. It's not given freely anymore. And how come so many still suffer? Must be something lacking. Maybe we were not sincere enough. Maybe we do not understand properly. Maybe we were not connected inside because we have not found the kingdom of God within. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, if we don't find a way to find out where it is, then we cannot receive the grace of Jesus. Just like our Father left a big treasure for us, but we don't know the key, we don't know where it is. It doesn't matter how many times we say, oh, I have treasure, I have treasure, I have treasure, it's no use. So if we can find it ourselves, then it's good. If we do not, we should ask. We should ask anyone who knows. Ask until we find out the one who knows. We should knock every door. Knock until we find the right door. The door which opened the gate to heaven. La Open the way to heaven. Otherwise, our life is very short and very ephemeral and is always in danger. We have nothing to lean on. Okay, I don't speak too much. <laughs> Let you... Uh, probably rest or go home or enjoy further. Feliz, Feliz Navidad. Yes, that I know. <laughs>